Hi, I am Pavani, working in the pharmaceutical sector in the UK for over 10 years now. In the last three years, the world we know has seen a lot of changes due to pandemic. On the back of COVID, the current Strep A outbreak that has already caused 13 deaths of children under 15 within the last three months is so distressing for parents. As a concerned parent, I am making this video not to create more panic, but to create awareness among the parents by sharing helpful information so that we can provide better care for our children. In this video, I am going to talk about what Strep A is, how bad it is for our children, what are the symptoms, what are the warning bells to watch out for and how can we support the child's recovery at home and most importantly how can we build their immunity because prevention is better than cure. To start with, let's try to understand what Strep A is. Streptococcus A bacteria is not new to the world. It is commonly found in throat and on skin causing respiratory illnesses like strep throat and also skin infections like scarlet fever. And this outbreak is also not new. Similar outbreaks of Strep A have happened before. But what is alarming this time is the steep rise in cases requiring hospitalization more than ever before. So what is causing the steep rise in cases? There are a combination of factors at play here. So firstly, scientists have observed that there are higher amount of viruses and bacteria in environment after the pandemic. And then due to the pandemic restrictions, the children were less exposed to this bacteria, which is also shown by the less number of Strep A cases reported in the last two years. And now because this being the first festive season after complete lift of pandemic restrictions, there are more social gatherings, which means more circulation of bacteria. So how are our children infected by Strep A? Strep A is primarily a childhood disease affecting the children in the age group 2 to 10. So children catch this bacteria mostly at schools and nurseries. So the bacteria is mainly spread through droplets that is when the infected person talks, coughs and sneezes and also through direct skin contact and also through contaminated food, fluids, toys and other things. So children who absolutely have no symptoms can can also spread this bacteria for up to three weeks after the infection. What are the symptoms of Strep A illness? Not all children show symptoms. However, most of the symptoms usually appear within two to five days of the infection. The major symptoms to watch out for are fever, high temperatures above 38 Celsius or 101 foreign heat, and sore throat, which can develop into severe tonsillitis and swollen lymph nodes in the neck, and also rashes, which are pinkish red in color with a sandpapery feel. So the first rashes usually appear on the chest and tummy areas so it is very important that the parents monitor these areas of the children for the first signs of rashes the other symptoms can also include stuffed nose meningitis sinusitis headache and also the children generally feeling weak and dehydrated parents of babies have to watch out for dry diapers which means that it is a sign of the babies getting dehydrated the child's immune system is expected to fight the bacteria which means that all these symptoms gradually improve within a week. What are the warning bells to watch out for? Sometimes when the immune system can't cope up with the bacteria, Strep A can enter into bloodstream, lungs and other internal organs causing life-threatening effects to the child, resulting in worsening symptoms. So parents have to watch out for worsening of symptoms, most importantly high temperatures above 101 foreign heat and severe tonsillitis which means the child finds it very difficult to swallow food and fluids and also pneumonia. Strep A being a respiratory illness affects breathing. So when the parents observe any of these symptoms, the child must be taken to the hospital seeking urgent treatment without any delay. 
Strep A is diagnosed through throat swab culture test. Results can take up to two to three days. In case of alarming worsening symptoms, NHS has strongly advised the doctors to start treating the child with antibiotics without having to wait for culture test results. Parents have to note this point that antibiotics can be requested from the doctor even before uh, receiving the culture test results in case of worsening symptoms. Prompt treatment with antibiotics is very important to avoid unnecessary complications. How can we help the children recover at home? Fortunately, most of the children are recovering at home without any complications. A few helpful tips for the parents to support their child's recovery. So first and foremost, it is all about monitoring and managing the symptoms. So firstly, when it comes to the body temperature, the body temperature of the child has to be monitored very closely because high temperatures can be alarming. So I personally use brown ear thermometer, which is one widely used by the NHS and then when it comes to sore throat bacteria especially strep A it resides in the throat so salt water gargle can do wonders because salt water kills the bacteria in the throat and so the child has to be encouraged to gargle with salt water daily until the symptoms disappear. And then when it comes to rashes, blisters and open wounds, to avoid the bacteria entering into the blood through the open wounds, it is very important to keep the wounds clean and also to monitor closely for the signs of infection such as pus. Hydration. Parents can encourage the child to stay hydrated throughout the day by giving them warm water and fluids very frequently. So we can mix immunity boosting foods such as ginger, lemon, turmeric powder, manuka honey with warm water. And when it comes to managing the sore throat, so it can be very difficult for the child to swallow. So we can give them soothing and nutritious foods such as chicken soup, mashed potatoes, scrambled eggs and also oatmeal and when it comes to fruits we can give them apples and pomegranates which help with the immunity we can try to avoid giving them dairy products especially if the children are already struggling with stuffed nose because milk products are known to increase mucus production making it even more difficult for the child to breathe Children who have sore throat can avoid salty and spicy foods which can dry up and irritate the throat even more including crisps, popcorn, crackers and all this. Use of antibiotics. Good news is that there are no new strains of strep A identified. So the current strep A is very sensitive and responds well to penicillin antibiotics. If your child is prescribed antibiotics by the doctor, it is very important to ensure that the full course of antibiotics is taken though the symptoms disappear early. This is to ensure that the bacteria completely eliminates from the body which also so protects the child from recurrent infections. Now let's talk about prevention, protection and immunity. It has been reported in the news that there have been penicillin shortages in the UK and we are well aware of the long waiting times in the hospitals due to staff shortages resulting in delays in the treatment. Though this is concerning, the current situation emphasizes the importance of prevention and immunity. With the children attending schools and nurseries, it is almost impossible to protect them from exposure to strep A. However, we can help them build and strengthen their immunity so that they can deal with this outbreak. We can support the child's immunity by giving them supplements in addition to balanced nutritious diet. I would recommend three supplements which are very important for boosting child's immunity. The first and foremost one is vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 deficiency is directly linked to the increased risk of streptococcal infections. Vitamin D3 deficiency is very common in the people living in countries like UK where the sun is very scanty. Children can take vitamin D3 supplements available in the market. 
babies who are breastfed are very commonly vitamin d deficient when compared to the ones on formula because formula milk is already fortified with vitamin d3 so when it comes to the daily dosage of vitamin d3 for your child please seek the advice of your gp who can advise the daily dose of vitamin d3 which is appropriate for your child's age and also their health conditions after vitamin d3 the second vitamin supplement is vitamin c which is well known to boost immunity in addition to giving citrus fruits as part of the daily diet of children we can also give them vitamin c supplements daily and then the third one is to include multivitamin with zinc to support their immunity I really hope you find this information helpful in dealing with this outbreak. I strongly wish all of us a healthy and happy Christmas and New Year ahead. Thank you for listening.